in the serene suburb of Seaford, New York. The Herman family's dreamy life is upended as their ordinary home becomes the epicenter of an extraordinary poltergeist phenomenon. With no prior history of hauntings or misfortune, their residence suddenly erupts with unexplained activities, bottles popping open, objects moving on their own, and an eerie sense of an unseen presence. Despite skepticism and attempts to find rational explanations, the events transcend understanding, drawing the attention of paranormal experts, the media, and a curious public. This is the untold story of Popper the Poltergeist of New York. Tucked away in the peaceful surroundings of Long Island is Seaford, New York, a place of subtle beauty and calm where the 1950s depicted an image of suburban peace. It was in this heavenly setting that James Herman created a tranquil life with his wife, Lucille, and their two children, Lucille, aged 13, and James, a year younger, at 12. Their home, a simple ranch painted in shades of white and green, served as a symbol of the typical American dream. With three bedrooms, a small kitchen, and straightforward simplicity, there was little to indicate it was any different from the other homes in the charming neighborhood, all of which were graced with the picturesque allure of tree-lined streets. Yet, beneath the surface of normality, a sense of mystery persisted. The Herman residence, with no dark history or stories of bad luck, was for some reason on the brink of becoming the center of a paranormal happening. This unassuming house against the calm backdrop of Seaford streets was about to inscribe its name in the halls of the supernatural. For unknown reasons, it was fated to be the site of a poltergeist phenomena, one that was so distinctive and captivating that its tale would be forever intertwined with the paranormal realm, casting a veil of fascination over the once peaceful existence of the Herman family. And seemingly out of the blue, things began to happen on February the 3rd of 1958. Until this point, the Herman family had not encountered anything out of the ordinary within their home. However, on this day, while Lucille was in the kitchen accompanied by her two children, an uncanny phenomenon unfolded before their very eyes. Bottles scattered throughout their kitchen without any apparent cause began to spontaneously unseal themselves. The caps were forcibly ejected, resulting in their contents erupting and spraying across the room, each bottle cap producing a distinct and resounding pop as it flew off. Some of the bottles allegedly engaged in an eerie dance, moving about with no visible support, a sight that understandably terrified them all. When James Herman walked through the door of his home, he was immediately confronted with the confounding narrative of the day's events. Carrying a deep-seated skepticism, James entertained the possibility that the curious happenings might be the result of natural environmental fluctuations, perhaps a significant rise in humidity levels, or an unforeseen chemical reaction within the confines of the bottles themselves. Such hypotheses briefly offered a comforting veil of normalcy over the situation. Yet, this semblance of explanation rapidly disintegrated as the full scope of the phenomena revealed itself to be far-reaching and discriminately affecting almost every container in the kitchen. Notably, even bottles secured with screw-on caps, which under normal circumstances would require human intervention to open, had mysteriously unscrewed themselves. The entire scene defied logic. Standing in stark contrast to the mundane reality James had expected to return to. A mere two days after this bewildering introduction, 
the bizarre occurrences not only persisted, but escalated, casting a wider net over the household's collection of containers. This time, the activity was not limited to the kitchen or to a specific type of bottle. Jars of all sizes, bottles brimming with a variety of household liquids, such as shampoo, bleach, and even luxurious perfumes, alongside tubes of toothpaste, began to manifest the same inexplicable behavior that had initially perplexed the Herman family. Each container, as if acting on an unseen cue, would suddenly and violently burst open. Their contents, once neatly contained, were now subjects of an uncontrollable frenzy, spilling, spraying, and splattering across the room without any apparent trigger or discernible pattern. The randomness of the incidents only deepened the mystery, as did the diversity of the containers involved. Glass and plastic bottles alike, regardless of their contents, viscosity, or the container's design, were equally susceptible to this unseen force. The phenomena seemed to mock the very laws of physics, with caps and lids that should have remained securely fastened, instead becoming agents of chaos. The scene within the Herman household transformed from one of domestic tranquility to a bewildering spectacle of uncontrolled disarray, leaving the family and eventually the wider community grappling for explanations in the face of such unfathomable occurrences. As time went on, the mysterious events escalated in intensity, co-founding the Herman family and leaving the wider community searching for logical reasons. These occurrences baffled all attempts at rational explanation, with comprehensive investigations yielding no satisfactory scientific or environmental understanding. This sequence of bewildering events signaled the start of an exceptionally captivating and perplexing episode in the realm of paranormal mysteries, positioning the Herman household at the heart of it all. James Herman, as mentioned before, was inherently skeptical by nature, always seeking a logical explanation for the unexplained. He was not one to hastily attribute events to paranormal activities. When the peculiar happenings first began to unfold within their household, his mind gravitated towards a more earthly explanation. He pondered whether his son Jimmy, with a youthful penchant for mischief, might have devised an elaborate prank, potentially using carbonated capsules or some other mechanism to cause the bottles to spontaneously erupt. With this theory in mind, James embarked on a discreet observation of Jimmy, scrutinizing his every move in search of any hint of evidence that might link him to the strange occurrences. However, despite his vigilant watch over the boy, James uncovered not a shred of evidence implicating Jimmy in the bizarre events. Meanwhile, the mystery within the Herman household deepened. The phenomena escalated in intensity and variety, transcending beyond mere bottles. It seemed as though every manner of container within their home was susceptible to this force. Bottles of all types would burst open without warning, their contents propelled across the room in a chaotic display, each eruption accompanied by a distinct, crisp popping sound that had become all too familiar to the now bewildered family. However, the disconcerting phenomena within the Herman home extended beyond the peculiar antics of their containers. The family began to observe a bewildering array of household items, seemingly taking on a life of their own, as if manipulated by something they couldn't see. Toys and books, even larger pieces of furniture, began to exhibit this kind of strange behavior. Chairs that had been stationary for years suddenly skidded across the floor, tables tilted without warning, spilling their contents, and doors slammed shut with no one near them. Among the smaller objects, dolls were found in different rooms from where they had been left, as though they had moved by their own accord. Books would not only fall from shelves, but sometimes 
would fly across the room, as if thrown by something or someone. Picture frames that had hung peacefully on walls for years would suddenly crash to the floor in the middle of the night, their glass shattering, again without any discernible cause. The velocity which these objects moved was astonishing. On several occasions, toys rocketed from one end of the room to the other, often narrowly missing family members as they passed. Furniture that required the strength of two adults to move would slide or even lift and then crash back down with significant force, leaving indents in the hardwood floors or marks on the walls. The impact of these movements was so intense that it not only caused physical damage to the structure of the home, but also left emotional scars on the family who were increasingly frightened by these occurrences. This escalation of activity heightened the atmosphere of tension and disbelief within the household. The Hermans, already struggling to comprehend the mysterious behavior of the containers, were now faced with a broader, more intense range of disturbances. These events seemed to defy all logic, suggesting that the presence of an invisible hand was guiding the chaos. The force and precision in which these items moved suggested something more than a mere coincidence or natural forces being at play, instilling a deep sense of unease and apprehension among the family members as they pondered the source and intent behind these manifestations. James, still clinging to a sliver of doubt about the paranormal nature of these events, decided to confront Jimmy directly hoping to glean some confession or explanation from him. However, Jimmy vehemently denied any involvement. It was during this tense confrontation that an incident occurred, which shook James's skepticism to its core. Mid-conversation, a bottle that had been sitting idle on the shelf began to tremble before gliding across the surface. And then... With the now familiar popping sound, its cap flew off right before their eyes. This event, witnessed firsthand by both James and Jimmy, served as a stark indication that the situation was far more complex and inexplicable than James had originally conceived. It was a moment that marked a turning point, compelling James to reconsider his stance on the possibility of paranormal involvement and the disturbances that had been plaguing their home. Perplexed by this point and desperate for answers, James reached out to the local police department. His call was met with skepticism, yet the gravity of his plea convinced them to dispatch an investigator to the scene. The officer assigned to the case was James Hughes, a man known for his pragmatic approach and skeptical outlook on anything that veered into the realm of the supernatural. Upon entering the Herman residence, Hughes' skepticism was put to an immediate test as he witnessed an extraordinary spectacle himself. Bottles not only popped, but exploded as if charged with an unknown energy source, propelling shards of glass across the room like shrapnel. Hughes, though shaken, documented these occurrences meticulously, marking the beginning of an official inquiry into the strangeness. Following Hughes's initial observations, the case caught the attention of Detective Joseph Tozy, a seasoned investigator with a keen interest in phenomena that defied easy explanation. Tozy, determined to uncover the truth, orchestrated a comprehensive surveillance operation within the Herman home. Over several days and nights, Tozy and his team kept a vigilant watch, documenting each incident with a rigor that bordered on the obsessive. The phenomena that they would observe was varied but also similar to what had already taken place. Bottles previously at rest would suddenly animate, their contents frothing and spewing forth as if under pressure and a particularly unnerving incident involved a bottle of perfume that in full view of investigators glided across the table with deliberate slowness 
before overturning to release its fragrant essence. Occasionally, bottle caps would detach and zip through the air with targeted precision, narrowly missing the observers and adding an element of personal threat to the occurrences. Tozy noted that each object involved in these incidents, upon examination, radiated an abnormal warmth, as if it was infused with an unseen energy. The climax of Tozy's observation came when a substantially heavy bureau desk, an object of considerable mass and unwieldy nature, abruptly flipped over on its own. The desk crashed to the floor with a thunderous impact, leaving the investigators bewildered and alarmed. This event was complemented by other startling manifestations. A figurine and a bull were seen to launch across the room, as if propelled by the same force. Their trajectories seemed to be marked with intent to harm. Also throughout this intensive period of observation, Totsi made a curious observation that the presence of one of the Herman children seemed to be a common denominator in the timing of these phenomena. Yet, despite his exhaustive efforts to uncover any form of deception, no evidence of trickery or manipulation could be found. The meticulous documentation of these events, coupled with the lack of any rational explanation, led Totsi to a profound realization. The realization that what he had witnessed transcended the boundaries of conventional understanding, firmly planting the seed of belief in his mind that the disturbances at the Herman residence were indeed a manifestation of the unexplained. In their quest for solace, the Herman family sought the spiritual intervention of Father William MacLeod from the Church of St. William, the Abbot. He visited their home and conducted a solemn ceremony infused with prayers and the sprinkling of holy water in every corner, hoping to cleanse the space of its unsettling disturbances. But despite Father McLeod's honest efforts and the family's hopeful anticipation, the turmoil within the household persisted, as if the blessing had merely passed through an invisible barrier, leaving the chaos untouched. As the events within the Herman residence escalated, word of their plight began to seep into the public consciousness, igniting a wildfire of media interest. The story sensationalized under the moniker of Popper the Poltergeist, a nod to the mysterious popping of bottles that had become a hallmark of the haunting, captured the imagination of the nation. Esteemed publications such as Time and Life magazines, featured in-depth articles on the phenomenon, catapulting the Herman family into an unwelcome spotlight. The surge of attention drew a flood of curious onlookers, paranormal enthusiasts, and skeptics to their doorstep. Reporters and a motley crew of self-proclaimed experts besieged the once peaceful home. Letters ranging from expressions of sympathy to outlandish theories bombarded the family day and night. Amidst this chaotic intrusion, James Herman remained steadfast in his determination to unearth a logical explanation for the events that had disrupted their lives. In a bid to capture empirical evidence of the disturbances, he went to the extent of installing sophisticated monitoring equipment in the basement of their home. These devices designed to detect even the slightest vibrations, he thought might help shed light on the source of the activity, but unfortunately, they would yield no conclusive findings, deepening the mystery rather than dispelling it. Journalists who ventured into the Herman residence, hoping to capture a glimpse of the supernatural, often left with more questions than answers. Many were first-hand witnesses to the bizarre occurrences that had become part of the daily fabric of the family's lives. In one particular startling incident, a reporter's camera became an unwilling participant in the phenomenon. The flashbulbs in his camera exploded as he prepared to document the scene, adding a tangible, albeit unnerving, dimension to his story. 
As time progressed, the enigma of the Herman household eventually attracted the attention of Robert Zyder, a physicist affiliated with Long Island's Brookhaven National Laboratory. Intrigued by the possibility of a scientific explanation, Zyder conducted an array of tests and analysis within the home. His investigations led him to theorize that the root of the disturbances might lie in the natural world, specifically the presence of underground streams beneath their property. He said that these hidden waterways could be generating an unusual magnetic field, a freak magnetic field that somehow triggered these unexplained activities. Despite the intriguing nature of his hypothesis, it did however offer little in the way of an immediate solace or solutions to the Herman family, who yet still remained ensnared in a web of mystery and public fascination. Perplexed by the ongoing mystery and at a loss for additional explanations, Detective Totsi reached out to Dr. J.B. Ryan, a renowned expert from the Parapsychology Laboratory at Duke University in North Carolina, seeking insights into the baffling phenomena at the Herman residence. Dr. Ryan, along with his team, delved into the case. They would hypothesize that the source of the disturbances might be rooted in the psychic energy emanating from an individual within the household. Through careful observation and analysis, they identified Jimmy, the son, who was consistently present during these occurrences, as the likely epicenter of this psychic activity. To explore this theory further, Dr. Ryan introduced Dr. Pratt, a specialist in psychokinetic phenomena into the equation. Dr. Pratt engaged Jimmy in a series of interactions, including conversations and recreational activities, in an effort to establish a rapport and observe any changes in the frequency or intensity of the paranormal events. Remarkably, it was noted that during these periods of engagement, the manifestations of the unexplained phenomena significantly diminished suggesting a direct correlation between Jimmy's state of mind and the occurrences. This led the investigative team to a groundbreaking theory that Jimmy was unknowingly channeling his psychic energy in a way that manifested as the mysterious events that had been plaguing him and his family. They postulated that Jimmy was a conduit for reoccurrent spontaneous psychokinesis or better known as the acronym RSPK, a rare condition where an individual without conscious intent triggers paranormal activities through the sheer force of their subconscious mind. This involuntary projection of psychokinetic energy was believed to be the culprit behind this series of unexplained occurrences, and these findings were considered groundbreaking because it would prove that the Herman family wasn't the subject to trickery or the workings of an unknown supernatural entity. Instead, they represented a profound expression of human psychology, exceptional and remarkable in nature. The concept that the human brain could exert influence over physical objects without any tangible interaction was a radical departure from the established norms at the time. This perspective suggested that under certain conditions, perhaps related to emotional stress or psychological factors, that an individual could trigger manifestations of psychokinetic activity. And this theory poised that the mysterious occurrences within the Herman home, from the spontaneous popping of bottles to the unexplained movements of household items, could be directly linked to the subconscious outpourings of a young man's psychic energy. And although this seemed to be a pretty decent theory for explaining exactly what was taking place, things within the Herman household continued to unfold. An array of television crews managed to penetrate the once peaceful abode, their cameras ready to document the bewildering phenomena that had taken residence alongside the family. This pivotal moment in the saga of the Hermans 
not only brought the eerie disturbances into the living rooms of people across the country, but also set a precedent, marking the Popper incident as one of the first hauntings to ever be broadcast on national television. Audiences from coast to coast were drawn into the mystifying world of the Hermans, witnessing firsthand the unexplainable events that had disrupted their lives for years. Amid the whirlwind of attention, the Herman family found themselves longing for a semblance of normalcy. The constant presence of camera crews, the relentless scrutiny, and the unpredictable chaos that had become their daily lives left them yearning for the quiet, uneventful life they once knew. They sought solace in the hope that the mysterious disturbances that had thrust them into the spotlight would soon dissipate, allowing them to reclaim the peace that they had once had. Their hopes would not be in vain. A turn of events as sudden and unexplained as the onset of the disturbances, the strange happenings that had held the nation's attention came to an abrupt halt in August of 1958. The bottles ceased their spontaneous eruptions. The objects remained still, and the eerie atmosphere that had enveloped their home lifted, seemingly without reason or warning. The end of the disturbances was as much of a mystery as their beginning, leaving many to speculate on the forces that could bring about such cessation of activity. The ending of the haunting brought a profound sense of relief to the Herman family, who were finally able to turn the page on this bizarre chapter of their lives. However, the legacy of Popper lived on, its mysteries unresolved but forever etched into the halls of paranormal history. The unprecedented media coverage it had received had not only brought the phenomenon to public consciousness, but also had set a new standard for how such occurrences could be shared and analyzed on a national scale. The mystery of the pauper poltergeist remains a source of enduring intrigue and fascination among paranormal experts, standing as a cryptic puzzle that continues to elude any form of definitive explanation. Such is the depth of the mystery that it prompted speculation among cultural historians and cinema scholars that the bizarre occurrences which had unfolded in the Herman household might have ignited the creative inspiration for the iconic film, Poltergeist. This connection underscores the profound impact that the story has had, not with just the confines of the paranormal study, but also its influence on popular culture and cinematic storytelling. In conclusion, the mystery that is Popper the Poltergeist not only remains a bizarre case that puzzles and fascinates us, but it also serves as a beacon drawing attention to the vast, unexplored territories of human experience and the natural world. It challenges observers to question the limits of their understanding and to remain open to the possibilities that lie beyond the conventional frameworks of knowledge. The story of the Herman family and the inexplicable events that occurred within their home does stand as a testament to the enduring allure of the unknown and the perpetual quest for answers in the face of the inexplicable. But what do you think? Was Popper the Poltergeist an entity, a naturally occurring phenomenon, or something to do with Jimmy the Sun? Make sure to let me know down in the comments below. I'd also like to thank you guys for watching this new video. And if you enjoyed it, please help me out by giving the video a like, leaving your thoughts down below as a comment, sharing this video around on social media so we can continue to grow, and subscribing with notifications on if you haven't already. And if you'd like to watch this video, as well as all my other videos ad-free, check out my Patreon or YouTube membership program where for as little as $3 a month, you can watch all my content ad-free. Once again, I'd like to thank Bob Hicks for writing and helping edit this video. Definitely go check him out over at The Missing Chapter, because I know that if you enjoy my content, you'll definitely enjoy his as well. Other than that, guys, I did just want to thank you for your continued support. 
Uh, it truly does mean the world to me to be able to do something that I love to do full time. And without you guys, that simply would not be possible. So I truly, truly appreciate you. Until next time, this has been Cody here at Mystery Archives. Remember to please stay safe out there and take care.